is mostly a 25 <laughs> Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in today. Joining me is Rob Cummins, Vice President of Marketing for Tejo Corporation. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining us today, Rob. You know, Rob, as we have been uh, talking a lot lately, we've seen uh, you know a, a continued explosion in interest, anyways, around the all-flash market. I know you guys are in the hybrid market, mm -hmm. and so there's there's some, I guess, some conflict there as, as to what makes the most sense and why. I thought it makes sense to have you come in and kind of let's chalk talk through the pros and cons of each of those and maybe we can give some advice to the users. Sure. Yeah, what we see is there's really three segments. There's what I'll call traditional storage, kind of the, the drive-based mm -hmm. systems we've been using for the past 20, 30 years. There's this all flash segment and then hybrid. And I'll talk about today where we've got an interesting product that plays in both those segments okay. here. But over here, you've got very expensive um, cost of acquisition, cost of power, higher latencies, because it's, it's an HDD-based um, architecture. Right. Mm -hmm. And the all-flash guys come in, and they've got a very low dollars per IOP um, from a performance perspective, right. but an extremely high dollars per gigabyte and that conflict there actually forces customers to to use it only as a point solution right for the fastest portions of their applications right what I see here is these guys really want to talk about this right, right. and they're then they're praying they find people in this market that have like 300 short stroke drives right that's exactly right, right. okay right because you can do in about maybe four to eight U which it takes three to six full racks of gear right over here right yeah okay yep. good and then what we have just um, started shipping a little while back is what we call our HA 2800 okay. and what that is it's an all flash array but with what we like to call a hybrid twist okay so it's a 4U box that's got 4.4 terabytes of flash mm -hmm. with dedupe and compression we can yield up to about 12 to 15 terabytes okay. of flash. But the hybrid twist that we add in there is you can chain two systems or two boxes of 72 terabytes each. So that yields about 148 terabytes. Okay. And then after dedupe and compression, it comes out to just about 520 terabytes on average. So you've got in a 10U package, a half a petabyte of capacity that can run at 200,000 IOPS. So you get real nice dollars per IOP, and the math here at street price, because this comes out to 48 cents a gigabyte, an extremely strong dollars per gigabyte as well. And, and how are people buying that? You know, because when you first talked about that, I thought, okay, so it's kind of it puts the whole thing on its head, right? You, right. You can, it, it almost sounds like you're saying start out and put everything on flash and then as stuff ages, let it drip to a hard drive and you can throw those in later. Right. I, I don't know if that's a practical way to purchase it though. Is that way people are really buying it? But typically we, we um, talk to customers and they're actually interested in the all flash okay. product. And then we start asking questions about the other applications, SharePoint, file services, maybe all of the pictures or media that a database is pointing to, mm -hmm. all that bulk content. How are you addressing that, right. Mr. Customer? And having yet two systems that do that, it's usually a combination of these two. Right. Just it becomes complex and all those things that having multiple silos of storage. Sure, because you manually have to manage those two tiers like you were saying earlier, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, our caching algorithms will resolve all of that. So you can either use our application aware provisioning, mm -hmm. enforce files that don't need the speed down here, or let the caching software figure it out on its own, and it'll just dump it down to disk because it's not being accessed that often. Okay. And then the uh, what's the connectivity uh, options on this uh, unit? Yep. Internally, these connect w via a SaaS backend. Okay. But externally, we have um, a very nice multi-protocol stack that lets customers connect over Fiber Channel, iSCSI, NFS, or SIFS, or it's like people like to call SMB. Okay. So you've got in every product comes 
bundled with all those protocols enabled. And I'll tell you, this fiber channel one's a big one. I, I was actually recently uh, meeting with an end user. Their number one requirement was they wanted to stay with fiber channel. And, yeah. and, and you know, that, that just siphons half of the new uh, players on the market right. out because they just don't have fiber channel support. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of the it, new companies here and here are re running over um, gigabit or 10 gigabit ethernet right. and run iSCSI over as a block protocol. Right, and, and they clearly wanted to stay fiber channel and I didn't see any reason to try to talk them out of it. So. Yeah, a lot of people got a lot of sunk cost in their Cisco and brocade right. fiber infrastructure, they just don't want to forklift out. Well, I've always said that once you have to start tuning an environment, the alleged ease of use of these environments, the, the iSCSI NFS type protocols, it, you know, once you start tuning these things up, it gets complicated from a networking perspective anyway. So. Fiber Channel, I think, is all in at that point yeah. as well. So, And you can run a combination of these concurrently. Right. Lots of our customers run a high-performance block protocol mm -hmm. um, to support a database or a, a high-performance application, a VM or VDI. Mm -hmm. And then right next to it, crack off an NFS file share on the same array. Okay. So you get that level of consolidation in there as well. So it gives them a lot of flexibility in how they want to use it and things mm -hmm. like that, right? All resolving down to you know, half a buck a gig now. Okay, great. And then I, I just we've spoken about this before, but to, to reiterate, you're, I think an important differentiator for you guys here is that you're doing dedupe compression inline, catching it before it hits any of these tiers of storage. Right? That's correct. So the flash and the spinning disk all yields the, the capacity reduction benefit of mm -hmm. inline dedupe and compression. Right. So even though these even though these are uh, inexpensive already. If you can get the dedupe and compression for free, why not? Right? right, and that's how we get this 148 terabytes to yield what I like to call an effective 520 terabytes on average. That's a that's a three and a half um, x ratio. Okay, so it gives people sort of an all flash consideration with a balanced approach as far as the the more content type of storage. Right, they get their cake and eat it too. You can get 200,000 IOPS and have a system that's running it at half a buck a gig. Awesome. Well, Rob, thanks for joining us today. You bet. Thanks, sir. George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in.